Okay, so today's video is just going to be continuing our transformations unit. Um, unlike the dilations, we're not going to change the size of these ones. Uh, with translations and reflections, we will in fact be making congruent images. They just might be uh, in a different place from where it started. So a transformation is something that has been done to a figure to result in the image of another figure. So with translations, y'all might remember this as just a slide. And a reflection you might know as kind of a mirror image of itself. We can look this way, we can look this way. So with the translation, every point within a figure is going to slide the same direction the same number of times. So you have to apply the translation to every single point of the figure. So for instance, a cheat sheet that's going to help you, this table here, the x, if I'm moving to the right, so the arrow indicates the direction. So if I'm going to the right along the x-axis, you're going to be adding as we go right. So notice that in my general rule, I'm going to start with something, I'm going to add to it. The opposite of that, if I'm heading in the left, it's kind of like we're going in the negative direction, so we're going to be taking a coordinate and then subtracting. For the y, you figured the y-axis is vertical, it's going up and down. So if I wanted to go up, for instance, if I want to go up, that would be like taking y and then adding on to it because I'm moving in the positive upward direction. So we're going to say y plus however many times it's moving. And then the reverse of that would be if I am decreasing, if I'm heading down in that vertical direction, what's going to control that is subtracting from the y. And you'll see what I mean in a second. But this is a nice little cheat sheet. So if I'm going up, I'm adding to the y. If I'm going right, I'm adding to the x. If I'm going down, I'm subtracting from the y. And then if I'm going left, I'm subtracting from the x. So you will need graph paper for this. And go ahead and graph these points. And then give the new image coordinates after you do these two things. So here are your three points. Here's what I want you to do with them. And then after you've translated it this time and this time, I'm asking for the image coordinates. Okay? So go ahead and pause and do that. So when you set up your graph, um, you're scaling it nicely. Uh, for mine, every one box is equal to one unit. So you had your original uh, triangle, which we called ABC, uh, down below ABC. And then the trick to this is you have to make sure you're going in the right direction. So to get to the pink one, you went up four, one, two, three, four, and the left three, one, two, three, and that one we'll just call A prime. If you do that to every single point, B, B ends up at B prime, C ends up at C prime, and then uh, for the second translation, uh, I did that in purple. So from A, you're going two to the right, one, two, five up, one, two, three, four, five. So there's your new one. So we're thinking we could graph this every single time we get a uh, command to translate stuff, or we can try to think about what is we, we can do to these original coordinates to get my new ones. So you figured um, if I'm translating four up, we know that I will be adding to the y. So when we have my original x, y, four up means... I can add 4 to the y, and then 3 left means that I am subtracting. So left means heading into the negative uh, x axis. So x minus, well actually, yeah, x minus 3. Okay. So instead of graphing them every single time, because what if you miscount one time, we can just use this rule right here and do the math. So for a prime, so let's see, a prime, if I say x minus 3, so I say 2 minus 3, that's a negative 1. And then if I say negative 1 plus 4, that should end up at a positive. Okay, and for the b prime, we can go ahead and look at it. And I mixed up my markers, but b prime looked like it was at negative 5, uh, comma 1. So negative 5, comma 1. And if we applied this rule, hopefully it turned out to be the same. So if b is negative 2, and then we subtracted 3, we're at negative 5. And then if y was negative 3, and then we added 4, we're at positive 1. So the rule is just kind of a shortcut to prevent us from having to graph over and over and over again. So c prime looks like it is at 1, comma, negative 1. So 1, comma, negative 1. And then we can verify with our math. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So if you wanted to verify with our second um, image, which we'll call the A 
double prime, A, B, C, double prime triangle, um, then you'll find that at A, just looking at our uh, graph, is 4, comma 4. And B it looks like, well, double prime. B double prime was at 0, comma 2. And then C double prime was at 0, comma 6. And with the rule, again, that's our end goal. We started with the original coordinates x and y. Translating to right means I'm going in this direction. So who controls the right? It's the x. So that means x plus 2. And then 5 up means that I am adding to the y. So y plus 5. So here's our general rule that would have gotten to us to the new coordinates immediately. So just to be sure, if I started off at 2 and then I add 2, I'm at 4. If I started off at negative 1 and then I add 5, I'm also at 4. So with negative 2 plus 2 gives me 0, negative 3 plus 5, 2, and then a quick check in the end uh, that takes me to, oops, so these two should be reversed. So if it's x, which is 4, plus 2, if I had been doing the math, I would have known that I uh, switched my x and y coordinate. Okay? So right now, for do now number one, I would like you to write the rule. Be sure that you write a and b down first, so that you have some record of um, how it was verbally and then how the rule is. Okay? So for the first one, if you started x and y, I'm going left, which means I am subtracting from my x. So I have now x minus 6, comma, 2 up means I am adding to the y. And there's the rule. For b, if I am starting with x comma y, and I'm moving 5 down, who controls the down? Well, that's the y. So that was a little bit trickier because we reversed these two. But 2 right means I am adding to the x. And then 5 down means I am subtracting from the y. All right. So now if you have something like example 2, go ahead and stop and copy this really quick. And I'm asking what the coordinates of this original point are after you do a series of translations. You could do this graphically in graph paper, or you could kind of treat it like it was a table. So say you started with the original coordinates, negative 3, comma, 5. And then I translate 4 down. Well, who controls the down? That's the y. So you can show your work kind of like this. 4 down means here. This stays the same. 5 minus 4 is a 1. And then we go to right. Who controls the right? Well, that's adding to the x. So I can add 2 here. Negative 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. This still is at the 1. And then if I continue over here, I ran out of space, so all I'm going to do is this. 3 up means I'm adding to the y. So plus 3 takes me to negative 1, comma, 4. And then 6 left, so who controls right left? Well, that's the x. Left means subtract. So minus 6 takes me to negative 1 minus 6 is a negative 7, comma, 4. So instead of having to graph this over and over and over, you can kind of uh, show the adding and subtracting on the x coordinate or the y coordinate as a series within a table. Okay? So the final do now for the translation portion is to describe the transformation made by the following rules. So go ahead and pause it, write the rule down first, and be as descriptive as possible. So you're telling me what kind of transformation, so is it dilation, is it a translation, uh, which direction, and then how far. Okay? So for the first one, this is a translation, uh, which is 2 left and 6 up. And then the second one is a translation 1 right, because I'm adding to the x, and then 2 down. So the final note is to remember to indicate the size and the direction when you're working with translations. Can our reflections also preserve the con uh, congruency within the image in the original? And you might know this as kind of a mirror image. Um, and the thing that you're reflecting over is known as the line of reflection. So I'm going to show you kind of a demo. And you can pause it and copy it down if you'd like. But in the end, the purpose of this is so that you can try to come up with the rule for when I reflect across the x-axis here, and then when I reflect across the y-axis, which is here. All right. So just to demo what a reflection is. If this is the dotted line is the line of reflection, then this entire figure has to be essentially flipped over the same distance from that line. So what was B here, you notice that B is 2 away from the line of reflection to the left. Now you're just going to take it the opposite. So I'm going to go 2 away from the line of reflection on the right, create a B prime. 
Same thing for C. Now it's on the opposite side of the line of reflection, but it's the same distance. So Y looked like it was, well, we can go all the way to the line of reflection if we want. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it would be on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the other side of the line of symmetry or the line of reflection. So likewise, the other thing you could do, besides counting from D all the way to the line of reflection, is to see how far D was to the left of C, and then take the opposite. So it's 3 to the left of C, now it'll be 3 to the right of C, and there's our reflected image that is the same distance from the line of reflection, but on the opposite side. Sometimes though, like in this example, the line of reflection is going to be part of your figure. So notice that when I reflect it over, two points are going to be in the exact same place. So B, B prime is going to be right on top of B, and C prime is going to be right on top of C. So we haven't taken an opposite, because if it's on the line of reflection, it doesn't have an opposite. So then I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, now it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right, we call that A prime. 3 to the left, now 3 to the right, D prime, and your reflected image, when the line is contained, uh, when the line of symmetry is part of a shape, is going to look like this. Then you can have it not as a side of your image, but as part of your image, and you think the same way. If B is two units to the right of the line of reflection, you just do the opposite. So now you're going to go two units to the left of the line and put your B prime. Since A is 3 to the left of the line, it's now going to be 3 to the right of the line. Call that A prime. D was 1 left, so now it's going to be 1 to the right. And C is 2 right, so now it's going to be 2 to the left. So C prime, your reflected image when the line of reflection is within the figure is going to look like this. So they are different orientations, same exact size, but now reflected. Okay? So when we are talking about reflections, the thing that we can use the general rule for is when it goes across an axis. So say I'm um, starting with this triangle, and I want all three points to be reflected across the x-axis. So you think, you apply the same logic. If L is 1 up, then L prime is going to be 1 down, and the same thing within here. And then M from the x-axis looks like it was 1, 2, 4 up. So now I can go straight to 4 down, and it's going to look like this. So when I reflect that image across the x-axis, here it is. I could do the same exact thing, but reflect it across the y-axis. And so that now, um, instead of going up and down, I'm thinking left and right. So if it was 1 right, I'm now 1 left. We'll call that double prime. And then if I was 4 right, I'm now going to go 4 left, put me an N double prime. And if this was 4 up, it's still going to be 4 up, but now on the opposite side of the y-axis. Right? So here would be when I reflect it across the y. So this is a pretty good uh, image to jot down right now. So this would be across the y-axis, and then this one would be across the x-axis. And again, your goal is to figure out how I can come up with the rule to create, to find the new uh, coordinates of the image without actually having to go do this process. So if we look at the coordinates of what it was, this was 1, 1, uh, and over here it's negative 1, 1. This guy was 4, 1, and now he's negative 4, 1. So you notice that if it goes across the um, y-axis, like this one. Sometimes it's easier to put the original points next to the reflected points and see what we can determine. So we'll create a little table. So here's the original, here's the image, and we just said the original was 1 comma 1, and when I reflected it across the y-axis, it became negative 1 comma 1. And then the original was 4 comma 1, and then when I reflected it, came negative 4 comma 1. All right? And I could do it again if you wanted to see it, but now that they're side by side, you can kind of see what's happening. What didn't change looks like the y. The y does not change, but the x-axis went from being positive to negative, and there's a word for that. What we were saying is it's the same distance from the y-axis, but on the opposite side. So what you can do to describe this is whatever my original coordinates were, when I'm going across the y, the x becomes opposite, the y stays exactly the same. 
And the way I've heard this said is the opposite of this becomes opposite. So if it's cross the y, the opposite, x, becomes opposite. By the same logic, if I'm going across the x-axis, the opposite, which is y, becomes opposite. And this one doesn't change at all. So here are the two rules for reflections. When they're across the x, the opposite of the x, which is the y, becomes opposite. And when it's across the y, the opposite of the y, which is x, becomes opposite. Okay, and last, lastly for your final do now, I'd like you to look at A and look at B. Um, write these tables down and then try to come up with the rule, knowing that we have now two tr true transformations, translation and a reflection. So what happens if they are combined? So write this down and then we'll talk. So what you should have been noticing is that from if you compare the y to the image of the y, those become opposite. So these become opposite. So the easiest thing to think of first is that your y became opposite. And then x is something happened as well. I went from 4 to 6, and then I went from 6 to 8. So it seems like in both times I added 2 to the x. So your rule could be a combination of a translation and a reflection. So let's just write what happened to this image according to this rule. So I look at it, and it looks like it translated how many and where. So 2, right? And what else happened? The opposite of y became opposite. So the opposite of y was the x, so this is actually a reflection over the x-axis. Over x-axis. Okay? And these are good examples to see a snapshot of, so when you do your classwork later, you can kind of see them all in one. Okay? For b, it looks like um, I started at a negative 5 and it became 5. I started at a 6 and it became negative 6. So in this case, my x became opposite. And then I went from 3 to 0 and from negative 4 to negative 7. So it looks like my y decreased by 3. So what this would be in terms of a description is, let's see, translation, how many and where. So translation 3 down and reflection over the opposite or x became opposite so the opposite of the opposite the opposite of y became opposite so therefore this is a reflection over the y axis